question that beginning bakers have is why do some recipes use both baking powder and baking soda? Why not just choose one or the other and add a larger quantity? To answer that question, let's look at the role that each of these chemical leaveners play so we can understand why we use them both separately and together in our recipes. Baking soda is activated by acidic ingredients, such as buttermilk, honey, chocolate, or lemon. And when baking soda is mixed with any of these ingredients, there will be an immediate reaction. Baking powder is activated by both moisture and heat, so there is a small reaction during the mixing process, and then a second and larger reaction will happen during the baking process. When all the elements of a recipe work correctly, the end product will have an even rise and a beautiful texture. If we try to make adjustments to our recipes that upset the chemical balance, things can go horribly wrong. Adding even a little extra leavener can affect your product. If you find old leavener in your cupboard, be sure to test it first. Don't assume that you can just add a little extra and your product will be fine. These cupcakes may look okay, but the extra leavener will create a soapy and bitter aftertaste. And on closer inspection, we can begin to notice the effects on the appearance, which is caused by too much leavener. If you have ever overmeasured your leavener or tried to substitute your baking powder for baking soda in equal quantities, you will learn very quickly that too much of a good thing will destroy the structure of your baked goods. Double check your product and measurements while prepping a recipe to help avoid this type of disaster. You cannot replace baking powder with baking soda in a recipe that contains no acidity because baking soda will have nothing to react to. Also, a recipe that contains only baking soda cannot sit a long time before baking. Delaying baking with products that contain only baking soda can result in an uneven rise and a dense texture, or no rise at all.